be Matty McGrath you're sharing with Deputy Michael Collins. Talk to me all 30, 30 minutes. Indeed, Thank you. K- K- um, G- well, I remember Brona Gould and Clown, uh, Emma McMahona, I was Selena Galea. And this very sad day, I want to express my sympathies to Mick McMahona and indeed her children and her extended family. Uh, look, Minister, as I said last night, and other people said, this is a totally missed opportunity by your government here to really connect with the people who need support. And while we have a little bit spread for everyone, uh, you know, it's, it's, just not, it's just not enough. And you try to do election budget, obviously, one eye to the election and one eye to popularity. Uh, the whole housing area. And I had Mr. Corbyn this morning on my own, own, um, on my own radio station. Keep doing the same thing. Keep throwing money at it. Seven, I think he's the sixth or seventh. He's not now, but he was a housing minister. And no outcomes. Yeah, I have no outcomes now with HAP. And also forcing people into HAP. And also uh, with buying houses. But you're taking the houses from the people outpriced in ordinary couples who want to buy the houses. So it's a folly. You have failed spectacularly to ask the county councils or to allow the county councils or to coerce the county council, whatever you want to call it, to build houses as they always did in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. I don't know what's going wrong, but you have that case. But there is an ideological uh, reason, and Deputy Daly referred to it here as well, and others, I'm sure. You don't, uh, you don't want to. Right? It's against your ideology. Let him eat cake. They're the ordinary people. They can suffer. They can wait. You won't deal with the banks. The banks that we bailed out. The banks that we bailed out. Take specifically the AIB. They reported um, uh, 7, 7.5 um, billion profit for six months a year last year. That'll be 1.5 altogether, or almost 1.5 billion in a full 12 months. And you're getting them ready to sell them. Another ideological disaster, but that's what you want to do. After the, my children, my grandchildren, which I have some at the moment, thank God, and their children will be paying back for the pain and sweat. And what are you doing? Uh, just tell them, a right lash, a right lift, do what you want the lads. Uh, instead of taxing them and the profits that they're making, it's, it just beggars belief that you penalise ordinary people. We have the, the whole rental sector, as I said. You're forcing people into the rental sector, rising up the rents, this cap and that cap, rebuilding Ireland is a failure, you won't admit it. You just keep doing the same thing. Was it Mahatma Gandhi said, uh, I think said that, uh, you know, keep doing the same thing, expect a different result. It's nonsense, it's folly, you're divided of thought, you're divided of ambition. And so is your department officials, because they've got too cosy over the decades, too cosy and, don't, and unable to get out and roll up the sleeves and get on the sites and allow the enablers to do it, support the small builders, the living city tax. A living city tax should be extended to all the rural towns in your constituency, Minister. The Cahillocks here, Deputy Roberts. Every town is no different. We have loads of vacant uh, spaces, shops closed. Any shop that's 10 years closed, I believe, should be encouraged to change that into a living space. It would do two things revitalise the, 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 the building and the town centre and bring people back into the town centre and make them living, a living centre. And a swipe of a pen uh, insists that the county managers uh, do away with the prohibitive 50% charges that they would planning uh, charges and development charges. And you do something then with the VAT, as I asked in the programme for government talks, that you do something in the VAT. Minister Noonan said you couldn't do it because you can't have this rate of VAT or that rate of VAT. You can have many creative rates of VAT that we saw with the, with, with the, with the, with the hospitality sector. And if you don't want to give it to builders or developers, and I understand that, pass it on to the buyers, the people who own these, let them claim it back. They're going to spend the money in the local hardware shop, they're going to employ the local tradesmen and tradespersons to do the work. I would regenerate an economy around as well. It's simple thinking, but you're so blinded with spin doctors, and I see you have a million extra included for Taoiseach's department for staff and, and expenses. A million. No problem at all. Just slip it in there. One million extra for that. So you failed ab- abysmally in the housing. And you can smile on your right, Minister. It's a, a sad record and testament to what's happening uh, around the country. As I said, the old reliables, you hit them as well. Um, you, uh, you didn't hit the drink. You didn't hit the diesel because of our fuel. Because it's going to get two or three increases between now and Christmas. It's exorbitant, the price of fuel. And I'm glad from that point of view, you stayed away from the carbon tax. But the carbon tax is going has to be looked at and, and the whole climate change looked at, but the whole reliables, as I said, you're doing another queer things with the drink, putting labels on the bottles, and you're doing more stupid things, regulations uh, that are going on here. It's nonsense. The real issues that matter to people, 
are their wage packages going home, good living conditions, an aspiration to live out a life, you know, with a modicum of decency and a roof over their head and be able to educate their family and get employment and you're failing miserably in that with all the different um, uh, different different you know schemes that you have. And you have Taurus Newa, which is browbeating people who are on schemes of five and six years, have made huge contributions to their communities, they want to get back into the workforce, not into jobs that they want to put them in, because they want to get profit or get paid on every job they put them into. I call it Taurus or Fawcett. It is an awful journey. It's unfair to people who don't have the literacy skills, pushing them into computer rooms, pushing them into companies. It's a wrong concept. It's bad in America concept. It's bad in England. And because we adopted it here. Because big business uh, came along and coached you for it. You're in bed with the big business people. That's quite obvious. I proposed AIB. We saw no, no tax on, on their profits and other banks as well. But AIB, which we own. The people own because of our sweat and blood and tears and the many people who have gone to their graves with suicides, the many mental health issues that have been uh, perpetrated on the people because of the actions of those banks and the tort force and the sheriffs and the carry on going around the county, the messing is treating of our people and when people stand up then they get a relentless force put on them. Again a situation temporary, I had it in my pre-budget submission, I have raised it for the last six or seven years, of conglomerates and namely one in my county of Coolmore uh, horse industry. A wonderful industry in the horse and the prowess there and many, 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 you know, expert jockeys and uh, staff and winners and horses and thoroughbreds. But you refuse to tax them. You were all bust down there shortly after you got elected in 2011, Minister. I back to put up and plan men and brought out to see what they're doing. They had been a fall in their pocket before that, they now have you in their pocket. And you refuse to tax them. You refuse to tax them and refuse to, 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 to have any issue around uh, Stalin fees. It was brought in by Charlie Hawley and I commended him at the time, a visionary leader. It was needed. But now the industry is, honest, is flourishing, and that that standing tax should be should be should be should be raised. You were talking about uh, a tax here last night, an exit tax for for, for intellectual goods. I think that Stalin's and Stalin's fee should be behind as well because the amount of money that's going into it overseas is unbelievable. They're buying every perch, every half acre of land at Tipperary. Young farmers, medium sized farmers, family farmers can't operate, can't make their, 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 their businesses viable and sustainable. I think it's a, it's a missed opportunity and you won't touch them. And there's money there, you won't touch it with any shape maker for them. It's outrageous. And you feel there's like the banks. So the rich can get richer. And to hell of the connect with the ordinary farmers in Tipperary. Just to protect yourself, I think you should refrain from making comments like uh, some people have another in this talk. No, well, sir, that's quite well, well, man, now, you have privilege on here. There are other places you might want to say. I was a member of the party. I know all about Hold it. On. Well, I don't know any. No, yeah. I, I was a member of the party. I know all about I, it. I can't be comfortable because you. I'm in the chair, but I'm only doing your own Thank interest. Thank you. Good you want to say it outside, Good Good. that's fine. Good morning. Look, Good these tax cuts won't be touched. Good As I said, they're wreaking, a havoc, wreaking havoc in our county. They won't allow any small farmer. They won't even go now to farmers to auctions. They won't even go to solicitors or auctioneers trying to put their money together. They know they have no hope. And it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a scorched earth policy that we resisted from all of our crumble and we resisted the landlords and proud record of resisting in Tipperary where the first shots were fired in the war of independence where we celebrated in 2019 Salah had begged and this is what we have now and the eerie silence and fear among people is shocking and the media won't cover it either nobody wants to touch it because this is a, a glamorised uh, lucrative uh, industry and it's all nice and classy and uh, b big business so it's not being tackled so the questions can be answered by the relevant people themselves we know uh, wh what's wrong small business and SMEs have been uh, crushed again I do welcome a path the budget. I welcome the extension of the PSI where they can um, uh, get claims if they're sick. Because we saw in the recession where many, many central paid people, the work collapsed and all their employees rightfully got their uh, stamps and got their, got their social welfare. The, employer, uh, the private employers couldn't get anything. That's, an, that's why I all beats that wait till 2019, but it's Tusakma, Lana, And we need to support them and nurture them and not have every second letter they get from revenue threatening them with imprisonment if they don't pay uh, if they don't pay with so many days. Uh, as I said, the corporation tax, I support the retention of that as well. We have nearly 5,000 direct investment jobs in Tipperary. We need to keep those as well. The tourism sector, you abandon it in the hour of need. A wonderful con scheme that you had for the 9% VAT on the tourism centre. Fine here in Dublin. They can charge what they like and get what they like because they have the population and people flocking in can't get any place to stay or live. But in rural Ireland, any place down once you go to Nace, there. Streets are empty at night. 
You could park buses and buses there. Hotels are empty. They needed that 4% VAT, 4.5% VAT. And uh, I could understand maybe put up 1% and give some kind of intention, but just to do this, a smash and grab to do this. And, and we have the doc, I read them into the record last night, I have them again today, the figures of employment that people have, have, have the numbers that they have gone out and done their work to visit the numbers. The extra revenue energy in the country is huge with that, uh, that policy. And you're uh, an East Galbury man, uh, Minister, and you know yourself the towns like Tumor and all those, how badly this was needed, and all towns in, in East Galway, as does the deputy here beside me. From every town, every county in the country is the same. No, no, apart from Killarney, maybe, and Galway City. Every town is the same other than that. We don't have the football, and we don't have the incentives to keep them. We have wonderful community efforts and endeavours, trying to bring greenways, trying to bring blueways, trying to develop uh, fishing, trying to develop uh, hill walking in my own temporary, the Munster Vales, a huge organisation doing tremendous work there under the guidance of Triona O'Mahony and indeed uh, for a three county project Limerick, Tipperary and, and West Waterford and a great project but we can't get the people to come if we're not going to have the, the facilities and we're not going to support these small, small business people the small business people that want to have this that this 9% fat was benefiting the climate change I said you abandoned it and uh, was, was shied away from them but you're going to have to deal with it agricultural and rural you have abandoned it in the most hour of need with the most massive fodder crisis this year certainly where I am and East Cork, South Tipperary, parts of North Tipperary, South Kilkenny and indeed East Waterford. It was very acute and the Minister told me it was 20%, now it's only 11% deficit. It's way more than that. They made no second cuts. They make it now, thankfully, but the crops are so diminished and you made no effort. And the IFA and ICMSA and cattle breeders and everybody else begged us to do something for the suckler herd. It's evaporating in front of our eyes and you left them in there and you gave them, I think they wanted two euro, 200 euro ahead, which was needed. I think you gave them 40 and it's so much red tape about it that they won't even be able to draw it down. So, so as I said, crime and justice, Minister, and I said it last night as well, crime and justice is just unbelievable. And the speak that went out, and with new commissioner, and I wish him well, the Algarve heard frontline defence between us and sanity, and now to be restricted in September, overtime for the rest of the year. No problem with overtime for Dublin. No problem with uh, dealing with the marauding gangs in Dublin. You have to deal with them. But we are entitled to protection in our communities as well. The fear is palpable in our areas, rural areas areas and the cuts to the Gardaí and I salute them to do what to do with the numbers they have and the cuts that are there are just outrageous. Taxation on the USC, I certainly welcome that um, because it was needed and I welcome it but it's, it's too little and too slow. When you have a situation and I welcome the, the restoration of the Christmas bonus and indeed uh, the, 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 the payment increases the social welfare but we have a continuum situation here every year of giving more to social welfare than we're giving the worker man. There's something badly wrong. We must have it profitable and viable for a man or woman to go out to do day's work. An honest day's pay for an honest day's work. And we must support that. And you're not supporting. The system isn't supporting. When I meet uh, people working in this institution last night and they tell me, yeah, you're great, you give fibre to people who have no work and you give, uh, like to me, a, a four euro. That is a wrong situation. I'm not saying, I, I welcome the social welfare increases, but we must have balance and fair and we must support them in that area. The people who want to go to work. Minister Tisha Fradkins are always talking about the, the fire in the band that gets up early in the morning and he's all, but he's not shown it. And this is the third or fourth or fifth or sixth consecutive budget that are not supporting the, 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 the as I said, the man that wants to go to work. I said there are many areas in the budget that leave a lot to be desired. You had golden opportunities, as I said, to tax the fat cats, the preserved. You had golden opportunities. You failed and shied away from them. You gone, you had a situation with carbon tax, which I said I welcome. I didn't want it on the fuel because we're going to have fuel increases anyway, in spite of the fact that we have a, a, an energy regulator. What is he doing? Doing nothing. And you haven't tackled the banks. You haven't touched the whole industry of the receivership and the situation where I have a family in, in, in Fenneton to me today, four houses in the complex, all able to pay for them, and because the landlord that, that owns them all, he's in trouble with the bank. It's been handed into, a, uh, into one of those vulture funds now, and they won't even answer phone calls. This man employs six people. His wife is self-employed in the house as well, in a different business, and he's paying his rent, and wants to buy the house, and he can't get engagement, just because the kind of a small developer, a small vulture, you could call them, that own the four properties, 
uh, didn't pay his own mortgage on his own house differently, uh, they are being uh, suffered and they won't be allowed to, to, to engage with one of these. You allowed them scot free, carte blanche. You allowed them to apply a tort force, which is despicable. P mercenaries in here, in some cases, from Northern Ireland, to attack householders in their houses. And threw a woman out last week and broke her, broke her wrist, a 74 year old woman. This is a tort world force. Wouldn't be tolerated in Dan Breen's time. Wouldn't be tolerated in men that fought for Ireland. And shouldn't be tolerated in our democracy uh, this day and age that we have uh, people treated like that. And in, in many cases, the Guardian are forced to intervene or stand idly by while it's happening. It's totally wrong, morally, physically, uh, financially, anyway. And those people are being threatened and intimidated. They're sick. Their families can't uh, develop properly, full potential. The worry and the strain is causing marital breakdowns, causing all kinds of mental health issues. And he just wants to ignore that because you're causing up to big business. I mean, huge big business. We saw it last night here. The big four uh, accounting houses insisted that you begin to change the legislation here uh, last night before midnight because they have the power. I'm talking about the PWCs and all these big people. Or any small uh, uh, self employed people, accountants and else, or paying people, paying rates, paying tax, paying wages, they don't get any support or any benefit. But these fellows can wheel in to the right places, to the right conferences, to the right breakfast din meetings or dinner uh, speeches and get their way. And we saw that last night. Go to Mahagut, um, that's Kangola.